Good evening, everyone. Um, we'll give folks another um, few seconds to join before we get started. Um, I've just shared on my screen um, which municipalities are included in this breakout room. Um, we'll go over that at the top of the meeting, um, but just wanted to have that featured um, um, just for your reference. Okay, well, I think we'll get started. Um, Rob, are you ready? I am. Great. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Andrew McFarland. I'm a project manager for the Transit Priority Group at the MBTA. Um, I'm joined tonight by my colleague, Rob Guptill. Uh, Rob, do you want to introduce yourself? Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Guptill. I am the Director of Service Planning at the MBTA. Pleased to be here tonight. Great. Thanks, Rob. Um, for this breakout group, um, is everyone able to see the screen um, that I'm sharing with the slides? Great. Um, so for this breakout group, we're in group one. So we'll be covering the uh, municipalities and neighborhoods of Beverly, Chelsea, Danvers, East Boston. Uh, note this is East Boston only and not the, the rest of the city, just based on geography. Um, Everett, Lynn, Linfield, Malden, Marblehead, Melrose, Nahant, Peabody, Reading, Revere, Salem, Saugus, Stoneham, Swampscott, Wakefield, and Winthrop. So we'll be going over changes on the, the map based on that geography. If you're um, in the wrong room or you want to um, review changes in other geographies, uh, please leave this breakout room and um, somebody in the main room will assist you um, with getting to the right room. Um, so with that, we'll dive into the discussion. We're going to go over a few introduction slides um, to give you an overview of the changes, and then we'll be um, opening up for question and answer in this group. So, um, so Doug previously went over. Can everyone hear Andrew? Okay, good. So we're just going to dive into some changes as they relate to um, the geography I just described. So for the first bucket of changes, um, for some services, we restored existing routes um, to their um, current routing as they exist today. Um, that is um, relevant to the 100, the 131, the 354, the 426, the 429, and the 451 in this part of the service area. Um, Rob's going to go into some of those changes in a sec. Um, the second bucket of changes is for rerouting to better um, serve medical facilities, and um, senior housing complexes and other areas um, where we wanted to provide more front door service. Um, those routes include for the, the T-104. Again, the T um, nomenclature is really just to connote um, routes that would be high frequency in the future. So the T-104, the 105, the 106, the 108, the 112, the 119, and the 120. The third bucket is um, new routes that have been added to the proposal. So these were not in the proposal that we put out in May of this year. Um, that includes the 113. So we'll describe that a little bit more in detail when we get to it. The fourth bucket is for um, routes where we change the frequency or the span of service. Uh, the span of service is essentially um, the time of day in the morning into the evening where we um, have changed um, the, the times of day for the services. Um, and fifth, the fifth bucket is um, routes that we removed from the proposal. Um, so in, in this geography, that includes 
um, the 133. And for the previous bucket for uh, frequency or span of service, um, that includes the 132 and the 435. Um, also, there are some routes that um, did not change since the proposal came out in May. Um, we're not going to get into those too much because they're um, they're pretty much unchanged relative to what we previously communicated to folks. Um, and that that includes changes for the T uh, T one ten, T one eleven, T one sixteen, the four thirty six, the four thirty nine, the four forty two, the four fifty, the four fifty five, and the Silver Line three. Again, those changes um, there's not have been there have not been changes to those routes since our our May proposal. And finally, there were some changes to frequency and span adjustments, um, but not to the actual structure of the routes. Um, so those two examples are for the 132, where we extended service to midnight, um, and the 435, where we reduced um, proposed frequencies but maintained improved frequency over existing service, um, including on Sundays. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rob to kind of go through um, specific routes. Um, for all these these slides, we're going to go over um, kind of what has changed since the May um, draft map. Um, but with that, I'll turn it over to Rob. Great. Thanks, Andrew. And yes, we'll uh, go through all these routes and then uh, pause at the end um, for comments and any uh, questions that you have about any of these. So uh, starting uh, in Woburn and Burlington, uh, as was mentioned by Doug in the main presentation, we heard a lot of comments about 354. This is express service from Burlington and Woburn to downtown Boston with a uh, peak direction stop in Medford Square. So we are bringing back the 354. Uh, this is a change that has a lot of domino effects, and we will uh, get into talking about some of those domino effects as we move into the next slides. So next slide, please. So originally we had Route 133 proposed back in May. This was a route that uh, connected Woburn and, and parts of Burlington, uh, connected parts of Stoneham over to Melrose and down to Malden Center. It was a very long route. Um, and one of the concerns that we heard from many operators, particularly for this route, was the length of time that it would take to perform a route like this. So with the reintroduction of the 354 that covers much of this uh, routing, um, we are also changing the routing of the 131. Uh, this was a route that was originally proposed to go from Malden Center to Lynn Central Square uh, via Saugus, we've essentially flipped the tails around and we're now suggesting um, that it would go to Woburn Center. Uh, and it would cover the portion of the 133 that uh, the 354 is, is not serving, at least not after it uh, gets on the highway. Uh, so next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the 131 in our May proposal connected Lynn Central Square to, uh, to Oak Grove uh, via Saugus and Square One Mall. Uh, we are changing that to go between Malden Center and, uh, and Woburn Center via Stoneham. Next slide, please. Uh, another route that was quite long was Route 90. This connected Arlington Center all the way over to Chelsea via Assembly Row um, and, and uh, past Wellington Station. This was another route that was quite long and uh, had a very long running time. And we have essentially kind of split this route in half. Uh, the 90 uh, in, our, in our fall proposal will operate between Clarendon Hill and Assembly Row um, and serve the, the uh, section that the, the 90 today provides. And then the new route that was mentioned during the presentation is the 113. This would be a, uh, a service between Chelsea, Bellingham Square, and Assembly Row uh, with a by passing through Everett Square and Sullivan Square on the orange line. Uh, next slide, please. 
The T96 was a high frequency route that we proposed in, back in May. We are still proposing to keep it as high frequency, but um, a couple changes that we're proposing as part of this new package. One is um, in Med, uh, leaving Medford Square, um, instead of going down College Avenue, um, we are proposing to take it down uh, Winthrop Street and George Street to serve uh, the neighborhood that the, the 96 serves today. This also provides a better connection along High Street in Medford. And then on the other end, the southern end, we are extending the T96 from Porter Square to Union Square. Uh, this was one of the changes that kind of coincides with the change to Route 39 that Doug was talking about in the main presentation where the Route 39 in the original proposal was serving this corridor between Union and Porter Squares. But with the Route 39 returning to its original routing, um, its current routing, uh, we are proposing to have the T96 serve that corridor between Union and Porter Squares. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the 100, this was a route that uh, did, does what it does today, but then was extended to Lawrence Memorial Hospital and up to Playstead. Uh, we are proposing to revert it to the existing uh, 100 and service along uh, up, up to Playstead is being resumed by the 134, uh, which we are restoring in this network that it wasn't originally proposed in the original network, but um, we are proposing to bring back the 134. Uh, as part of the revised proposal. Next slide. Uh, bus Route 99. Uh, uh, this was a route that uh, we kept to, in the original proposal, to the east side of, of Malden um, and the Orange Line. But uh, we heard a lot of uh, comments that came back saying how uh, this proposal did not connect um, the, the east side of, of Malden uh, of, of, of Malden with um, with Salem Street uh, like the 108 does today. So I'll speak to that in a second. But for the 99, what we are now proposing to do is essentially combine it with the 97. Um, so the 97 uh, serves portions of, uh, of Everett. Um, it serves Commercial Street in Malden. Uh, so we would have the 99 serve those two portions that the 97 does today. The 99 would also go to Gateway Center uh, and, and, and serve, the, serve the Gateway Center. And this has several follow-on effects to other routes that we'll go to right now. Please, next slide. So one of those is the 108. Um, as I mentioned, the prior proposal uh, terminated at Malden Center. Uh, the revised proposal um, it proposes to revert to the existing 108 on that side of uh, on the eastern side of the western side of the 108. So it would serve Malden Center uh, and then continue like it does today, connecting Malden Center um, and Wellington uh, via the the Edge Edgewood uh, neighborhood. And then on the um, eastern side. We are proposing to extend the 108 to Linden Square like it does today after serving Kennedy Drive. We are also proposing that the 108 would continue along Salem Street to get to Kennedy Drive, which allows us to change the T109, uh, which is the blue line uh, in, the, in the right graph. Thank you, Andrew Yak, for pointing that out. Uh, that originally we had we had put that on Salem Street because we didn't have any other service on Salem Street. But with the 108 serving Salem Street, we can put the T109 back on Eastern Ave, which is a quicker routing for the T109. Uh, next slide, please. And then one of the other impacts of having the 99 serve the Gateway Center is that we don't need the 106 to serve the Gateway Center anymore, and we can revert it back to the existing 106. Uh, that, that exists today. Next slide, please. Um, and then here's the change that I mentioned for the, the 109, where 
but it's it's serving Eastern Ave as opposed to Salem Street because the 108 is serving Salem Street. Next slide, please. Uh, Route 105, uh, we heard comments uh, that we needed to have that route serve um, uh, the, the neighborhood, uh, um, Hancock Street, uh, thank you. Um, so doing what the 105 does today to serve that neighborhood. Um, and then you'll see a, sh a short change in, or a small change in the routing that we uh, are proposing at Square One Mall, uh, just a, a way that uh, we are thinking about trying to make the route work better um, to get through the mall. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the T-104, this was a change that uh, Doug mentioned in his presentation, so two changes. Uh, one is in Chelsea, in, in, in downtown Chelsea, to use a portion of Spruce Street to get a closer connection to the market basket. Um, and then the other change is instead of terminating the T-104 at Wood Island Station, we would terminate it at Airport Station. Um, so this would provide a direct uh, service for residents of Malden, Everett, and Chelsea directly to Airport Station. Next slide, please. Uh, the T the uh, 112 uh, originally was proposed to be a circulator service between Admirals Hill and uh, the, the Senior Summit Hill. Um, but under this proposal, uh, we are proposing to extend the service for those two hills down Meridian Street and connect to the Blue Line at Maverick Station. Uh, I would also mention that this would replace what the 114 is doing today that provides kind of additional service between Bellingham Square and, and Market Basket and, and Maverick. This route here uh, would serve the two hills. It would serve Market Basket and then also serve um, the Blue Line at Maverick Station. Next slide, please. Uh, Bus Route 120, there are two uh, changes that are proposed here. One is for the routing through the Orient Heights neighborhood. Uh, some of the turns that we had proposed in the original proposal upon closer inspection were not feasible. And so we are proposing a, a slightly different routing to be able to serve the one-way streets and the hills of Orient Heights. The other change is on uh, the Winthrop end. Uh, we had originally proposed to terminate uh, the 120 and the 119 um, north of its current uh, route terminus down in Point Shirley. Under this proposal, we are still proposing not to go to Point Shirley, but to extend it to the uh, the beach club, uh, the, the, the yacht uh, club, I believe it's called. Uh, so it's a slightly longer uh, routing and extension further down the point, but not all the way to Point Shirley. Uh, next slide, please. And this would be the same change, the one that I mentioned for the 120, this would be the same change for the 119 that would also extend a little bit further down the point. Next slide. Route 426, um, a minor change here in that we had originally proposed for the 426 to go into Northgate Mall, uh, but we are proposing in the revised proposal to keep uh, the 426 straight on Squire Road, the way that it operates today. Uh, I would also mention that the portion of the 426 in West Lynn that connects West Lynn to Lynn Central Square with the elimination of the, the 131 from the connection between Lynn Central Square um, and, and Malden, uh, where the 131 is going to Woburn instead, just wanted to note that this section between East Lynn and Lynn is no longer uh, noted as a high frequency corridor because it would just have the 426 serving uh, this corridor, which would be every 30 minutes or better. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I mentioned that the 426 was no longer serving Northgate Mall. One of the reasons that we can do that is because we are reverting uh, the 429 to its existing routing and it terminates at Northgate Mall. Uh, the 429 would largely operate as it does today under this proposal. 
Next slide, please. And then finally, uh, Route 451. Under the original proposal, uh, we had kept it from crossing over into Salem. It had stayed entirely in Beverly. Uh, we heard comments uh, suggesting that we that, that connection to Salem Depot and the bus routes and commuter rail that was there was a useful thing. So we are proposing to restore Route 451 service to Salem uh, Depot. All right, I believe that that's the last one. So maybe I'll just hand it back to you, Andrew, to go through this last slide, and then we can move to questions. Thanks, Rob. Um, so yeah, we can turn over to questions and answers. Uh, I know that some of you had messaged directly in the chat, um, so I'm happy to start with those questions. Um, we can also pull up um, the interactive version of the map to go through it um, with a little bit more context, if that's helpful for folks. Um, but I know a few folks have raised hands, so let's start with, with those questions. Um, I'm gonna um, start with Ryan Williams. I'm gonna ask to unmute you. Hi, thanks very much. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine, Ryan. Great, thank you. So um, I'm a city councilor for Melrose and I represent a district that's serviced by the 131. And we were all really excited to hear that the 131 is back. Um, but I had a question about the routing because the 131 used to go to Oak Grove Station. And now I see that it's been rerouted to uh, serve Malden Center and to skip Oak Grove Station. And in fact, I think in the new bus route, there is no longer any bus service arriving at the east side of Oak Grove Station where you guys have just spent something like $5 million overhauling the bus depot. So I want to figure out, is this correct? Is this an error? Um, and, and figure out if there's any way that we can convince the T to bring the 131 back to Oak Grove Station, because a lot of the riders, and I actually just got done with a meeting with Wakefield and Malden City Councilors, a lot of the riders that are using the 131 are coming there to go to Oak Grove Station. And while Malden Center isn't a terrible slog past Oak Grove, it is through a couple of lights and um, I just really think that we need to, to think carefully before we before we completely eliminate bus service to Oak Grove Station. For folks in Melrose, it's it's really essential to our usage of the bus. Thank you. That, that's a very useful comment. Um, we Rob, this was. Oh, let me know if you want me to pull up any visuals too. I can pull up a different slide if you want. Okay. Yeah. If we need to, I think that'd be great. But I think I can handle this one. Um, so yeah, that's a great comment. Uh, this was intentional that uh, we wanted to provide all the connections that Malden Center provides. Um, you know, the T96 high frequency service, the T104, all these great new high frequency connections that are terminating at Malden, starting and terminating at Malden Center. But you raise a good point about uh, the busway and how under this proposal, there would be no uh, bus service uh, into the Oak Grove busway. Uh, it's certainly something that uh, I think we will take as a, as a note and uh, hearing that there is a, a vested interest in getting to Oak Grove because of the faster trip to the Orange Line is certainly a, certainly a, a rational uh, point to make. Uh, so we'll, we'll take that in, in good consideration. Great. Thanks, Rob. Um, I'm going to go next to Hannah Melcher. Um, so Hannah, I'm just going to ask to unmute you, and then feel free to um, to say your question or comment. Hi, thank you. Uh, I'm Hannah Belcher. I'm on the town council here in Winthrop, and um, I just wanted to more or less comment on a few things. Um, the precinct that I represent is the Point Shirley neighborhood. We had written as a council a letter opposing a lot of the changes, namely cutting off bus service to all of Point Shirley. And while we appreciate that service is going a little further into our town landing, that still leaves uh, just shy of a mile for people to have to walk from the end of Point Shirley to the nearest bus stop. I heard a lot of talk in the presentations tonight about things including accessibility, equity, wait times, improved service, and these route changes for the 119 and 120 go against all of those things for my constituents and a lot of Winthrop. There's also the MWRA treatment plant at the end of Point Shirley. We have a lot of traffic safety concerns about their employees driving on our roads. 
during shift change, the bus could be an answer to that, but this is taking that completely off the table. So while I understand you have taken a lot of public comment into consideration, and I'm glad some areas are getting the routes that they're they're asking for, I'm a little disappointed in the updates to our route. So I just wanted to voice those concerns. Thank you, Ms. Belcher. That's that certainly, you know, there are, were many comments and, and uh, requests that came in as part of the public process. And while we wish that we could have done them all and addressed them all, we were not able to. Uh, but, you know, please continue to submit your comments as I'm sure you will. Uh, this is an ongoing process and um, you know, certainly uh, this is our proposal as we plan to move forward with, with it, but uh, you know, who knows what the future may, may hold. Thank you, Hannah. Um, I'm gonna go next to Evan Mitchell. Um, Evan, I'm gonna ask to unmute you. Feel free to weigh in. Hi there, thank you. Uh, my name is Evan Mitchell, also a uh, resident of Winthrop uh, on Point Shirley. Uh, I'm gonna echo a lot of what uh, Hannah uh, Belcher stated earlier. Uh, I'm a recent transplant here from Somerville. Um, kind of one of the desirable parts of living here was having a bus line. And it going away uh, kind of makes me feel that, you know, uh, the folks of this part of Winthrop are not valued. Um, and, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks that work for, uh, for Logan Airport that are flight attendants in the area and they, um, they essentially will be having to take taxis or lifts or whatever uh, into work, you know, every day. Um, so these are the folks that are being affected by that. Um, I do have one specific question. Uh, with the 712, 713 being replaced by the 119, 120, are those um, not sub uh, uh, subcontractors with Paul Revere or are they MBTA employees? That's a great question. Uh, so today, 712, routes 712 and 713 are, as you noted, uh, routes that we subcontract with Paul Revere. We have not made a decision about private routes. Um, subcontracting is part of any of these routes here and part of the bus network redesign. Uh, we may look at these routes. We may look at other routes. Um, the main goal that we have is that we would not increase the amount of contracting uh, that we are necessarily looking to do, um, but where those where that contracting may happen, um, it's an open question that we're we're still going to have to figure out. Gotcha. And um, just wanted to also kind of like note that the De the Deer Island uh, T stop was redone over the summer uh, to make it ADA compliant. So it just feels like kind of a waste to be, you know, stopping uh, service to that area. Um, but you know, definitely very disappointed uh, by by the decision. So that's all. Thank you for your comment. Um, next, I'm going to go to State Representative Sally uh, Karens. So I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and feel free to go with your question or comment. Great, thank you very much. I want to thank. Um, Thank you for the opportunity. This is the third um, or fifth for me, but third feedback session. Um, I do represent the town of Danvers. So I also represent West Peabody uh, and Middleton. Um, Peabody has a couple of bus routes. Danvers is pretty much a public transportation desert. We had three bus routes at the start of this when I uh, been, have been advocating for restoration of a route that goes through Danvers Square. And we logged on uh, to the last community forum. I see some of my neighbors here tonight. I know a number of Danvers people were not able to log on tonight because there were limited participants. I just wanna say this. At the beginning of this process, Danvers had three bus routes. Two of them originate in Lynn and they go over one, I do believe goes to Salem Depot. They go to the Liberty Tree Mall, they wait almost in tandem. They then go out Endicott Street, up the hill to the North Shore Mall. At one time, the 435, peeled off to the right and went through Danvers Square. It's about a mile loop. And that was a good thing. And people who cannot walk or rather cannot drive 
depended on that bus. Now, I will say this, several people who come over on the Lynn buses, the 465 and the 466, they depend on those buses. Those buses need to be maintained. At the same time, Danvers is a town that needs a connection to Salem. We always had it. You could always get the bus over to Salem. That has stopped. It stopped midway through this process, even though we were told, no, there will be no changes to existing routes during the planning process. Well, that turned out not to be true in our case. They cut the 435. When the plan came out last week, much to our dismay, uh, we, the 435 wasn't there. I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact that Danvers has undertaken an exhaustive rezoning process in order to accommodate transit-oriented housing. We are going to live with a very large, overly dense project because we want to do our part in the housing arena. We are working towards that. We are at our 10% of affordable housing, but we want to do our part. We would like our downtown to be revitalized. A bus stop is part of that. So the idea that they eliminated the 435 in the middle of the process, while this governor and the administration are pushing for transit-oriented housing, it makes no sense. So I must say to log on tonight, finally, thankfully, and hear reference to the 435, well, the 435 was done away with. So please clarify for me and my constituents what has happened with the 435. Will you restore a route that goes through Danvers Square? Thank you for the, the comment and the question. So uh, just to be clear, uh, Route 435 is in operation today. Uh, it goes between Lynn Central Square and Salem uh, via the malls, um, and uh, North Shore Mall and Liberty Tree Mall. Uh, when we, during the pandemic, when we suspended Route 465, uh, originally Route 435 terminated in Liberty Tree Mall, but when we suspended Route 465, we extended Route 435 to cover the portion of the 465 that we was no longer being covered because we had eliminated the 465 and provide that connection to Salem Depot. And what that about the connection to Danvers? I'm sorry? What about the connection to Danvers Square? Did that just yes. no longer, that was no longer a priority? That that was, Danvers was no longer served as part of that, that change. Danvers Square, I should say. Uh, the routing that we are currently doing for the 435 today is the routing that we are proposing for in the new revised proposal. And what would it be? Uh, it would operate between Lynn Central Square and Salem Depot via the malls. And why um, won't you send it through Danvers Square? Well, uh, I mean, one of the reasons that we don't have any service going to Danvers Square is some of the data that uh, Doug mentioned that we were looking at for trip uh, patterns that were happening, origins and destinations. We just we don't see the necessary demand uh, to serve Danvers Square. And you have data that shows that you have demand uh, on the 466. It's an identical route. It goes from Liberty Tree Mall to North Shore Mall. And they're both empty half the time, more than half the time. So we, we do see data uh, for demand going to the malls. Um, this would be on routes 436 and 435. Um, I, I do want to say, though, that you know we are looking at this. We looked at this data to make decisions. And one of the great things is this data is going to be continually available to us. And if we begin to see demand in the future that's coming from higher density uh, neighborhoods, this transit supportive uh, development that you're talking about, this is certainly something that we have a vested interest in serving that type of demand. But it's kind of a, a chicken and the egg sort of issue, I, I think. Um, we 
we certainly want to serve that demand, but we need to feel that uh, we are going to be effective and efficient in the service that we provide. Well, efficiency is one thing. If you were really concerned with efficiency, with all due respect, you would not have two identical buses traveling an identical route with about less than a handful of passengers on them running between Liberty Tree Mall and North Shore Mall. Meanwhile, there used to be a nice route and it would go up Pine Street in Danvers past a nice historic uh, site the Rebecca Nurse Homestead, which could bring some travelers over from Salem. You frequently see people who do that, who people who are interested in the witchcraft trials and what happened, uh, because of course it happened here. And uh, this is really a small lift. It's not a big thing to add one loop on one of those routes to go through Danvers Square. And I, I'm just at a loss as to why you can't explain it, won't work with our town, won't, won't see why we feel this is important. I think we, we pay have a half a million dollar assessment. Yeah. It's uh, not a lot in the grand scheme, but we're, <laughs> what we're asking for is very little. Thank you for your comment. I, we can continue this conversation offline, but I, I just want to make some time for the remaining uh, folks who have their hands raised. Um, but thank you, Representative. Thank you. Um, next, uh, Senator Joan Lovely. Um, Senator, I'm going to um, ask to unmute yourself and feel free to speak or provide your comment and question when you can. Thank you very much, Senator Joan Lovely. I represent Danvers, Beverly, Salem, and Peabody. Um, I just too want to echo the comments of the representative and um, urge uh, the T to really take a look at returning service to Danvers Square, given, um, again, what's already been said, that we're looking at transit-supported um, development. If you look at, well, while I agree that there should be service to the malls, um, there, aren't, there isn't a ton of housing around the malls. Um, there's a lot of housing in, in right in downtown Danvers where people, our constituents walk to the bus stop, um, especially folks with intellectual disabilities and are able to get on the bus and, uh, and get on their way. So I, I too just wanna urge the T to take a look at returning service to Danvers Square, and and we, and we will we and can encourage pe people to take uh, take the transit, take the bus instead of removing it altogether. So I, I just wanted to be on record with that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. Um, moving on to uh, Ramey uh, Parker. Uh, Ramey, I'm just going to ask to meet yourself and feel free to um, provide your comment or question. You guys can you hear me? Yeah, Ramey, I can hear you. Great, thank you. Um, I, I'm Ramey Parker, Stoneham Select Board Member in Um, I just have a couple quick comments. Um, I'm sad about the 133 being taken out of the mix. However, I am very grateful that the 131 will be extended through Stoneham because we do not have an east-west connection. And as you know, the 132 is our only bus um, down Main Street in Stoneham. So we we had that east-west connection. So I'm happy about that. Um, I do want to talk about the what the uh, rep from Danvers just said about the MGL 48-3A with the transit priorities um, um, zoning that is, is happening to towns. Um, we had talked uh, at one time about the 99 and hopefully getting that extended. Um, Again, Stoneham is doing some zoning changes as well, and we have zoned an area to comply with uh, what the governor is asking us to do. And we would really like the, another look at the 99 just to go another mile down the road um, to a housing um, complex that's already there with over 300 apartments with soon more to come. Um, and lastly, um, and my question, I put it in the chat, but. Um, I didn't hear you say anything. Is there Sunday service being restored to the 132? 
I'm sorry, I was momentarily distracted by the message about how much time we have left. Could you just repeat that question about the 132? Yeah, I just wanted to know if there was Sunday service coming to Stoneham on via the 132. I know they extended till 12 a.m., um, but I wasn't sure about the Sunday service. Yes, so the 132 would operate all day on Sunday. Um, and like a Saturday schedule? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, next, we're going to Lisa. Lisa, I know we have um, probably less than a minute, so um, I just want to give you a quick time to, to say your comment or question. Hi, my name is Lisa Silva. I live in Danvers, and I'm a town meeting member for um, the precinct that is um, right behind the square. And I just want to echo what uh, Sally Karens and Joan Lovely were saying about our stop um in, in the square it's it's extremely disappointing that it's not being restored um not only is it the geographical center um but we suffered a lot of business loss due to covid and we did um do an extensive rezoning so that we could have a live work area in the downtown area um i live a few blocks behind where the the stop was um and i use the trip planner Lisa, I'm just going to cut you off because I think we're going to get uh, returned to the main room. 